Hi there, welcome to my short review of The Wall Street Journal, A Guide to Information Graphics by Donna M. Wong. Uh, this is my first review in hopefully a series of data related books that I've been reading as part of my journey into data. If you want to see who this book is aimed at and how it might be of benefit to you in your journey, stay tuned. As this is a data book, I'll start off with a few high level stats and facts. This book was first published in 2010 and then again in 2013. It's quite a compact book at only 160 pages long, which is quite short for a data book. The author, uh, Donna Wong, she became the director of graphics at the Wall Street Journal in 2001 and was responsible for setting the standards in graphical visualization there. She also happened to study under the eminent Edward Tufte at Yale College. So I would say that uh, Donna as an author has some serious pedigree to talk about this topic. Before I discuss the potential audience intended and its benefits, I might talk about why I actually bought this book in the first place. Using visuals to tell a story or a narrative is a key part of journalism. Um, so I've taken an interest in seeing how various publications and media organizations use visuals to communicate different types of information in effective ways and then try and apply that to my own work. I find a lot of inspiration from authors like Alberto Cairo, organizations like McKinsey or The Visual Capitalist, and then also publications such as The Wall Street Journal or even like The Financial Times. Uh, the FT have even published a handy vocabulary of the visuals that they use in their work and the types of information that they apply it to. Uh, you can find this and download it at ft.com forward slash vocabulary. Uh, there's quite a lot of information in there and it's quite an interesting read. And if you've ever seen some of my challenge work that I have on LinkedIn and on my blog, um, you will see that I like to create these narratives that are a balance between uh, the visuals or charts with some reinforcing text description. Uh, which is a similar style to what you'll see in many of these publications. So I tend to learn a lot from them. Um, with that in mind, this book offering advice on do's and don'ts from an experienced person and a major journalistic publication, it was almost too difficult for me to resist in buying and taking a bit more of a detailed look. The structure, content and explanations mean that this book is accessible or even beginners to data, or those who may not be in data but want to incorporate visuals into their work, you know, as a writer of reports, etc. Um, many of the subjects will be equally of interest to those with even slightly more experience, where you might pick up the odd sort of gem of wisdom or refresh some things that you may be a little bit more rusty on. However, if you're a more experienced professional uh, who's had you know several years working with data. Uh, you might find it a little bit more lacking in sufficient depth and detail to learn too much uh, or learn anything really new. Um, and as this book is only 160 pages and it covers a broad base of subjects and visual types, it's actually not going into the deepest meditation on individual parts of data theory or visualization. But I don't necessarily see this as a bad thing. In fact, I see the conciseness and sort of pragmatic advice on do's and don'ts as a good thing in this case. Looking at the structure and the context, uh, this book contains five main chapters. The first chapter is more around the basics of using things like data context, um, using color effectively, using sort of consistent fonts, uh, appropriate line types and things like that. If you look um, here, there's an example looking at the steps of creating and reviewing visuals and also advice on things like the appropriate do's and don'ts of using color. So this is just a snapshot of the book itself. Um, as mentioned, this sort of early chapter, it might be overly basic for some people, but it's very useful for beginners or if you're even a little bit more experienced just as a skim through or a quick refresher. Um, for those that may have picked up some wayward habits along the, along the way. Um, the general content in terms of looking at this type of information, it reflects sort of some of, some of the similar topics that you may have read if you've read books like uh, Storytelling with Data with Cole, Cole Nussbaumer and Affleck or um, let's see what else, uh, Show Me the Numbers by Stephen Few. The second chapter is probably the longest and maybe of the 
biggest use to most at a beginner to intermediate level. This chapter takes elements and visuals such as pie charts, bar charts, scales, etc., and assigns two pages side by side on each topic to create a brief structured, what I would call a mini lesson. Uh, one page on the left will highlight sort of the don'ts or the pitfalls and how you shouldn't use a visual. And then the page on the right will show you what are the best practice and techniques uh, in using this type of visual. So here is a snapshot of a few examples. One's looking at the height and the weight of lines and how you should use that. And then also the correct proportions for things like pie charts. Yes, pie charts aren't always evil, so sometimes they are of use. Um, I personally think this is a smart way to look at each topic. It gives you clear, practical advice and explains the visual and in, in the difference between sort of good practice and bad practice on a side-by-side. -side. The third chapter is quite short, but neat. It looks at the uses of things like means and median values, as well as percentages and actual changes and how to set axes for effective comparison and things like that. Uh, as an example here, we're looking at the re-indexing of charts from zero to 100. This is sort of a technique that makes it much easier for like an end user to compute change. So for ex the example here shows that if you're if your value goes from four to seven, um, that can be quite sort of, di not difficult, but a bit more taxing for people to uh, calculate in the head. If it goes from four to seven, you know, what's the percentage increase there? If you re-index that um, to like a zero or a 100, and then you show the increase in value from there, it's much easier for an end user to see, you know, what, what it is. So you're taking the, you're taking the computation out of the end user's head, you're putting it on the sheet so that the end user doesn't have to think so much. So that that's one, one of the tools is, you know, not, not making your end user have to think too much. You do the hard work so that they don't have to. The fourth chapter looks at what are described as sort of tricky situations. And it's some advice on how to deal with topics such as, you know, missing information or data, or looking at constraints in the use of color, you might be restricted to using black and white or you know company colors, etc. Again, it's not an in-depth look at any of these particular topics, more so sort of this sort of simple advice, rules of thumb that can be applicable in most situations. Again, here's a simple example of looking at ways to show sort of small changes in big numbers without resorting to exaggeration or distortion that may be misleading. And if you see these techniques being spelled out and explained so plainly, it actually helps you think of you know, maybe even other ways that you could achieve this. And that's what I like to get from books like this. It sort of inspires you to sort of think a little bit outside the box or new ways of visualizing things. And then the final chapter is related to more of a few sort of practical applications in the business world such as creating organograms, plans, reports, etc. Here's a good simple example of highlighting sort of high level progress, showing a combination of sort of simple text and color. Now these may not be anything mind blowing or sort of, you know, new ideas in terms of design, but the simplicity um, is, is, you know, I like it. it. It gives you something simple that you can use that everyone can understand. Overall, this book blends together some good lessons in journalism and visualization, and there are some overlaps with books like Storytelling with Data by Cole Nuflick or Show Me the Numbers by Stephen Few. Um, but there were a few sort of key points that I took from the book when I was reading through it. One is, you know, you've got to be very thoughtful and purposeful in the type of visualization you choose and any graphical elements that go into them. You, you have to make sure that they're all playing a part in communicating the story and the narrative without distorting that information or being misleading. Kind of, in other words, number one, choose an appropriate visual, consider the context that you're using it in, and then don't clutter it unnecessarily with things that are of no benefit. And then even shorter than that is keep your visuals clean. Uh, the second is not to make your audience work hard to understand the numbers and what you're trying to communicate. 
this is so important. The use of things like uh, appropriate scales, comparisons, colors, doing the calculations, providing annotations in a way that makes it very easy to understand. The effort should be on your part as a designer or someone creating these visuals. The effort shouldn't be put into the audience's lap to try and make assumptions, guesses, try and interpret too much. Um, so that's like my major takeaway from this book. Now, it may be over 10 years since this book was first published, but these key points will be forever relevant and applicable no matter what tool you're using or the subject that you're approaching. So if you're looking for a practical reference book that you can reach to, reach for to quickly remind yourself of the do's and don'ts of particular visuals and their elements, then this is a recommended book. However, if you're looking for something with a deeper analysis and commentary, you may want to skip this for you know something a bit more deeper by you know Stephen Few or Tufty, where they go into a lot more they go into a lot more detail and they look at each each of uh, each issue in in, uh, in more detail. Um, okay, so that's from that's all from me. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope this review helps. If you have this book yourself, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.